Hello everyone, welcome to problem 2.2 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. Today we're going to be dealing with some electric fields, essentially calculating the electric field uh, due to a configuration of two point charges at some arbitrary point in space. So let me just read for you guys the uh, problem statement from the book. So it says to find an electric field the magnitude and the direction a distance z above the midpoint uh, between equal and opposite charges plus and minus q that are a distance d apart. So that's exactly what we have here. So we have two equal and opposite charges a distance d apart on the same axis and we're trying to calculate the electric field at the point in space P here that is on the z-axis um, which is along the midpoint between the distance between the two charges and so z is just an arbitrary distance um, so it can be any distance along this axis and then I've also labeled here some things that will be important um, the distance between each charge and the point that we're interested in finding the field at is labeled script R. Um, distance is exactly the same. And I've labeled the, uh, the distance between our origin and each charge as D over 2. And uh, the angle from the vertical to um, this line here connecting uh, the charge to the point uh, theta. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this problem. So we have a very, very symmetrical setup here, and that's gonna be an important part in how we solve this problem is using some symmetry. So if we were to think about um, the electric field um, produced by this charge, we know that an electric field produced by a point charge is radial, and um, therefore the, the direction that the electric field of this point charge produces at this point in space is radially along the line connecting it so it would be um, out this way we'll just label that E1 and remember when you are considering um, the electric field you're acting as the when you're considering the direction of the field um, you pretend that you're putting a positive unit charge at that point in space to determine the direction. So, for instance, if we're now going to look at the direction that this, elect, uh, this charge produces, well, it's a negative charge. So if we put a positive point charge in space here, the direction would be towards it because they want to attract each other. So instead of being radially out, this is going to be radially in towards it. So it produces a field this way towards it. I'll label that E2. And we can see that um, these two are pretty symmetric here. And if we actually, um, I'll label this the x-axis and this is the z-axis. If we draw out the components of, of these two vectors, of the two electric field vectors, and I'll try to do my best here you can see that um, for E1 the vertical component, the Z component is up and for E2 the vertical component or the Z component is down and we know the components are exactly equal because the electric field magnitudes will be exactly equal just the directions of them are going to be different because the, the, the magnitudes of the charges are exactly the same and, it's a completely symmetrical situation. So the only difference is the direction of each field, not the uh, magnitudes. And so the vertical components of the fields cancel each other out. And all that's left is the x component of the fields. So we have E1x and E2x. And they're sort of like layered on top of each other here because they're exactly the same. They're, they're the same magnitude and direction. So already, if the vertical components cancel out, we know that the only contribution to the total electric field using the principle of superposition is 
um, are the two X components of each field. So E total, the total electric field at our point in space P, um, which I'll kind of label like that. Um, actually, I'll draw it down here since I'm, uh, you guys can't see it up there. So the total electric field um, at our point P will just be E1x plus E2x. Um, and if we just want to consider the magnitudes real quick of each field, um, I'll just, for now, I'm going to denote the magnitudes. I know I draw the uh, absolute value sign, but if I don't draw a vector symbol over it, just um, just take that as the magnitude. So if you want to know the magnitude, well, we just add the two x components of each field. It would just be 2ex, where ex is just the, you know, the component, the x component of one of the fields. And um, what is, how can we find the x component of the field now? Um, we don't really have an equation for that. We know how to find the electric field of a point charge. Um, and this is where our angle theta is going to come in handy, is this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta up here. And we can use a little bit of trigonometry to say that uh, sine of theta is then um, Ex over the total electric field. Therefore, Ex is just the total field of one of the charges times sine of theta. We're just talking about magnitudes here. Um, scroll that out. So replacing that into here, we get that the total, the magnitude of the field, the total field is just two times E times sine of theta. And we can also simplify this even more by the fact that sine of theta um, also has another uh, relationship um, with it being defined here is that you know this is a right triangle so we can say that uh, sine of theta is also equal to opposite over hypotenuse so d over 2 over script R or d over 2 script R and what is script R well, script R is just, uh, you know, uh, using Pythagorean's theorem. So script R squared is equal to D over 2 squared plus Z squared. So script R is the square root of that. So let's do this. D over 2 square root of D over 2 squared. Uh, plus z squared, let's get that in square root, and then we have d on top, so that is sine of theta, and what is e? So e is just the magnitude of the electric field of one of the charges, and we know um, that the electric field, um, the magnitude of the electric field of a point charge is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, the magnitude of the charge, which is just going to be Q, over the distance between the charge and uh, the point in space squared. So that's going to be script R squared. And given our uh, that we know what script R squared is, we know this is going to be uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, this is going to be d over 2 whole squared plus d squared and q on top. So it's getting a little crowded. So we have an expression for e, and we have an expression for sine of theta, which is this. So we just need to now plug that back into here, and that will give us the magnitude of our total field um, at our point p. So the magnitude of the total field at P, remember uh, my notation is just no vector sign is magnitude. 
is, well, we have two, um, and we can do a little bit of factoring because, um, well, we, we, so we have two and then we have, uh, let's do, I'm trying to think about how to arrange it. So let's just plug in E. So you have one over four pi epsilon naught. Let's just do the math. And then we have Q over D over two squared plus Z squared. And then times sine of theta, so times D over two times the square root of all that, which is D over two squared plus Z squared. Seeing if you can see this still. And we can see that the two cancels and these two quantities are the same. If we remember what this was, is this is script R squared and this is just script R. So that would be script R cubed, um, which would make this to the powers of three halves. Um, so let's write this out again. So we have total, uh, the magnitude of the electric field at point P is then just one over four pi epsilon naught. And we have QD on top. And then we have D over two squared. Because this is, you can essentially think of this as uh, something to the two halves um, times something like x to the two over two times x to the one half, which would make it x to the three halves. Um, that's just basic algebra, so I assume you can follow that. So this is going to be all that to the three halves power. But we don't want just the uh, magnitude; we want the direction of our field. So this gives us the this is the magnitude of our field at uh, the point P here, due to both of these charges. But what direction does it point? Well, we know that the vertical components cancelled, and so the x components are the only things contributing to the electric field here. And what direction are they pointing? Well, they're pointing in the x direction. That's why they're the x components, and therefore. The, the, the unit vector we use would just be x hat. I'll just go ahead and tag on a vector uh, symbol. And this is our answer. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, q times d over uh, this quantity to the 3 halves in the x hat direction. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to clarify some things. Um, and yeah, be sure to subscribe for more videos coming in the future. And I'll see you guys in problem 2.3. Bye.